I've been playing this game non-stop since release, and I've compiled together 25 tips, tricks, and combat secrets in Dragon's Dogma 2. We got everything from inventory management to gameplay mechanics you may not know about. Yes sir, after watching this video, you'll be easily tossing griffin chickens on a barbecue grill. Alrighty then, let's jump right into it. The Mage Basic Healing Spell, Anodyne, can deal damage to undead creatures, such as zombies, skeletons, and these ghostly hooligans. Yep, it's a protective bubble healing allies while damaging the enemies at the same time. Like, goddamn, man, that's pretty cool. Given you have a ready supply of healing items to use in your quick slot, you're essentially immortal, if you're quick enough. At the moment you run out of health, you can use healing items and keep yourself alive. I mean, this Minotaur ravaged my team. I was the last one left, but I held it down, man. Clutched up like a Chattosaurus Rex. Because every time my health hit zero, I swiftly used a quick heal and was all good. And thankfully, I had plenty of healing items on me. Would you like to jump off a cliff without taking fall damage? Well, here's what you do. Step one, grab your pawn. Step two, yeet pawn off cliff. Oh, nope, she died. Nope, back to step one. Grab another pawn. Yeet that pawn off cliff. Jump safely into his gentle arms like a warm hug. Another cool little tip about skeletons, if you molly whop them hard enough, they can break apart with their tiny little skull flying off, rolling away like a stray peanut. Now if you don't crush the skull, the skeleton will resurrect back together. Watch this, I knock his skull off the dude's body and he catches it. He fucking catches it in his hand. Like damn bro, what a guy, what a guy. Just plops it back on, no problemo. So right here you can see that's another skull rolling away and I smashed it. Now I have doomed its spirit to hell, never returning back to earth. If you're considering resting around the campfire, it's wise to do a little pre-sleep cleanup in the vicinity. Dealing with any scallywags in the nearby area before you set up camp will decrease the chances of being rudely awakened during your beauty sleep by some bum-ass impolite goblins. I mean, these dudes clearly do not appreciate the value of beauty sleep. Oh my goodness! These pesky happy flappers can be extremely annoying, especially if you are a melee fighter with no ranged attacks. Well, feel free to throw whatever you can find at them. Nearby rocks, dead bodies, hell, even use your own teammate like a human dodgeball and launch them on up there I I can... to knock down the happy flappers. Keep in mind that throwing items and enemies may not do insane damage, but it does deal heavy knockdown power. That's what throwing rocks or random items is most effective at, dealing heavy stagger. If you need to waste just a few hours, maybe gotta wait until nighttime for a quest, find a bench like these in town and just doze off. Don't worry, no city scoundrels will molest you while you're sleeping in public. You got your pawns to protect you while you take a nap. Make sure you rest at inns. The game has an autosave feature, but resting at the inn is like your main checkpoint. Using campsites or just saving is not significant in the same way that resting at the inn is. I shit you not dude, I lost probably 10 hours of progress because I didn't rest at the inn, I just kept using campsites and the autosave. Big mistake man, big fucking mistake. I was furious, I was so mad. Plus this way, if you fail a mission or something goes down in a way you're not happy with, you can backtrack to the last time you rested at the inn, which will override any progress you've made after that. After an enemy is injured or guard broke, now is the time that you can yoke them up or pin them down. For example, you can only grab the lizards after you cut their tail off. Well, when the enemy is injured or guard broken, you can perform a running tackle. You run forward and jump while pressing the grab button, and you will perform a tackle takedown in Super Shinobi style, which puts you in position to rip his freaking heart out with ease. This also works on larger enemies. If they are staggered off balance, you can run, jump, and tackle into them, potentially knocking them down. Killing Monsters 101 
First of all, positioning is key. Where you are directing your attacks, whether it's the legs, body, its head, all changes the damage you deal. How much knockdown power you are inflicting also changes depending on the body part. Always keep in mind how dynamic this game is. Like the more bodies grappling onto a monster, the more it can weigh it down. So if you've got two, three members of your team mounting the same monster, it can have drastic results, such as preventing a griffin from flying off. Setting a griffin on fire will also prevent it from flying and drop that bad boy out of the sky. Placing a powder charge as the thief right on its face or its wings will be most effective. The griffin's wings are the part that is most vulnerable to being set ablaze with flames. Barbecue that turkey, baby. Roast that bitch up. Clearing out and organizing your inventory is something you will spend loads of time on. Well, I have a tip for newer players. When organizing, you can always throw all your materials into storage. You pretty much will never need materials out in the world. Any and all materials you or your pawns have, just toss it straight into storage. Boom, nice and easy. While in the storage, you can still access them to upgrade equipment or combine them. I'm sure you've seen gameplay of destroying bridges, and well yes, go ahead, definitely partake in the fun. Though if you're like me, then your first thoughts are probably, Oh my god, but then it's broken and I can't cross again. Nah, don't worry. The magical game fairies will come and rebuild it after a few days. So destroy as you please, dropping people to their abysmal demise. You will receive random side quests by NPCs in need by shouting out to you as you mosey on by. Well, be careful man, be careful. These NPCs don't always have the best intentions in mind. They might be nefarious and lying to you. I mean, look at that evil face man. Oh, she up to something, she up to something no good. So keep your wits about you and stay on your toes. Killing Monsters 102 Be aware that bigger monsters have two statuses. You have the stagger or knocked off balance, then you have the full takedown. When they are knocked off balance, this is when they will momentarily stagger, and now is your perfect opportunity to attack the weak spots, strike at their legs, and deal heavy knockdown damage, hoping to achieve a full takedown. One trick you can perform is grabbing hold of them and pushing or pulling. Yeah, literally pulling on their feet to topple the giant over while they are staggered. Here you can see I'm using the thief's and snare skill to pull down this ugly beast like I'm goddamn Hercules. But again, you can also grab right onto them big ol' smelly moldy feeties and push or pull to trip them up. Right now, this Cyclops is drenched for some reason, so that's why we are freezing his cheekies off super easily. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. That's a nice position right there. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. When they are fully knocked out on the ground, obviously that's when you get bloodthirsty, go ham and start clapping cheeks to the fullest to deal maximum damage. This may seem obvious, but I recommend you try customizing and tweaking your button mapping to your preference. I mean, I changed my main light and heavy attacks to R1 and R2. This way I can attack without taking my thumb off the joystick, so I can seamlessly look around with the camera while attacking. Now, this game requires you to control many different actions and buttons at the same time, and if you got them Palpatine fingers, then I definitely recommend you figure out what's best for you. Elemental damages and debilitations are very important. Any chance you can, use these containers found throughout the world. The red ones are oil for tarring. You get the monster all lubed up and ready to burn, big boy. This will drastically increase the effectiveness of setting the target ablaze and dealing fire damage to potentially stagger the monster. Then the white ones are water, which will drench the target. Drenching the monster by throwing water at it will make it vulnerable to being frozen with ice. You can hit it with cold ice damage and freeze his nippies off. By the way, you can view any debilitations you or your pawns might currently be inflicted with by going to status and viewing here. Hairy monsters are typically weaker to fire, saurian lizards are weak to ice damage, and much more. 
I recommend having access to at least two different types of elemental damage between you and your pawns. Elemental types are not the only types of damage. You will also notice strike and slash damage. Well, this can make a big difference too. Strike is best against hard, rocky surfaces like stone golems or skeletons. Think of strike damage like smashing with a big old bonk, blunt weapon. While slash damage is better for softer, fleshy critters that can be sliced up and carved out like a Thanksgiving turkey. Be sure to make your pawn exciting. Enhance the allure of your pawn by giving it captivating characteristics. A wacky name, unique appearance, whatever. Do this to catch the attention of other players in the rift so that they will use your pawn and therefore it'll gain advanced knowledge and tips about quests. I mean, you want your pawn to be freaking Einstein. You want the most knowledgeable pawn in all the land. It will benefit you infinitely during your adventures. I mean, imagine your run-of-the-mill fantasy-looking dude named John pulls up. Bruh. My last week grocery list is more memorable than this dude. Nah, you wanna have freaking Shrek walking up looking crazy, strutting on the scene looking powerful. Or you can use the sex sells tactic. Because, let's be real, the gaming community has more simpy simps than the ocean floor has got sand. Oh my god, look at them things, look at them things, man. Y'all are wild man y'all are wild so get your pawn looking sweet have them boobies bumping and i guarantee your pawn's big old jugs will be chosen more often i know most of you have already created your main pawn already but there is something in the game you can obtain called the art of metamorphosis you can use this to rebuild you and your pawn's appearance are you stuck on a quest having trouble finding little Johnny who's been abducted by perverted goblins? You want to reach him before he gets seasoned and eaten alive? Well, you got two options of help. First is using this lovely oracle, a small 50 pence, and she'll give you a hint on your current primary quest. It's usually pretty f***ing useless, but sometimes it can help. And number two, when browsing pawns in the rift, this symbol here indicates that this pawn has prior experience on the particular quest you currently have. Have activated. So mark and activate the quest you need help with, then search for a pawn with this indication so they can share their knowledge with you and help save little Johnny before he gets his little boy cheeks clapped. Are you a masochist? Are you the type of hardcore gamer that enjoys being beat up and abused, but then pushing through your limits and succeeding, going plus ultra, plopping your giant nutter butters on the table after conquering an extremely difficult task? Well, I have a tip for you to help challenge yourself here. As you make your way through the game, you may find it being much easier than you would like. And unfortunately, there is no hard mode you can turn on. But one trick to prevent you from steamrolling every monster you come across is by not using your extra pawns. You don't have to use them. You aren't forced to use four pawns. You can just roll through the world with you and your main pawn, Bonnie and Clyde style dynamic duo. This could give the game's difficulty a much needed boost to make the overall experience feel more satisfying and rewarding for you. If you go through the game with just you and your main pawn, that definitely gives you some chad points. You know what else can make you a chad? Joining up in our gaming discord, made specifically for action RPG fans like you. Here you can meet new players, discuss builds and weapons, partake in live events, all that. So feel free to come check it out and be part of this growing community. All gamers are invited. Link to the discord is down below. In this game, talking to NPCs is how you receive 90% of the information you need. Well, this can be a problem for some of us who have the brain size of a squirrel or the attention span of a TikTok obsessed teenage girl. But don't worry, you can go to the menus and to history where you can find pretty much everything important the game has told you so far. Think of it as your personal vault of knowledge filled with pearls of wisdom and personal data about all the NPCs you've come across. 
Be aware, NPCs can die forever. It's on you to revive them. If you're in the area before the body begins to decompose after a couple days, you can use a wake shard on it to revive. Or the body might be sent to the morgue. But that's it. If you don't do that, he's gone, so. Make it quick. Hey, yo, you heard what he just said? That was mad rude. I just wasted a wake shard on his grumpy ass. Damn, bro. Now, if you made it this far in the video, please body slam on that like button and comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you have any tips or tricks of your own? Please share with us below. I thank you for watching my fellow jabronis and I will talk to you later. Stay golden.